Okay, Daniel, what do you think? You want to kick off? I think we're good to go. Yeah, let's do it. Well, then let me let me just start. Say hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to do a guide to end-to-end -end encryption with Emissary Ingress and Linker, Linkerd. I'm Jason, and I'm joined today by Daniel. Hey, everyone. Good to see you. All right. Oh, I thought my laser pointer was in better shape than it was. Uh, so I'm a technical evangelist for Buoyant. That means I talk to folks about Linkerd and try and get you to use it in your production environment. You can find me on Twitter, GitHub, or over on Slack. And hey, everyone. Daniel, yeah, start. Daniel Bryant, head of DevRel at Ambassador Labs, an awesome team and work amongst the community. So hopefully you see me pop up. I've managed to snag Daniel Bryant UK pretty much everywhere, right? Like hashtag on brand. So love getting involved as a Jason, as a, you know, all of us here, right? If you want to chat to us, um, obviously today you can jump in the, the Slack and reach out, but feel free afterwards, hit me up on uh, Twitter, probably my most popular place, uh, but I'm also on LinkedIn and, and other places. So always enjoy uh, chatting to folks, helping where I can. Awesome. All right, so quick coverage of the agenda, just talking about what it is we're gonna talk about today. Uh, you're going to get an insight into what is the emissary ingress and why is it awesome and you ought to, you ought to consider using it. We're going to talk about traffic and some terms that get used a lot, like north, south, and east, west. Uh, could tell you about Linkerd, which hopefully you know about, but I'm going to go into anyway. Uh, and we're going to see how do they all work together and like what's the level of difficulty to get these things integrated, which, spoiler alert, it's pretty darn low. Um, and with that, I'm up. Going to hand it over to Daniel. Appreciate it, Jason. Thank you very much. So, MSRE Ingress, like I say, I know you're all super familiar with Linkerd. Um, MSRE Ingress, also a CNCF project, too. We're at the incubation level. Fundamentally, Kubernetes native Ingress controller. Uh, we donated to the CNCF, I think it was, we started the process 2020, but it actually happened the, the full donation at incubation level last year, mid last year. Uh, you may have known, you know, we're like the artist that prints, right? Formerly known as the, API, the Ambassador API Gateway. We've got a few different names. And as Jason's alluded to, we do have MSRE Ingress, which is the pure open source Kubernetes gateway. And we have the Ambassador Edge stack, which has a community and a commercial version that adds extra value kind of out of the box on Emissary Ingress. All the stuff we're going to run you through today, you can do in, in both Emissary Ingress and Ambassador Edge stack. It's just a bit easier in Ambassador Edge stack a lot of the times. We're fundamentally all about the CRDs, right? Kubernetes native. Um, we love GitOps. We love the Argo folks, the Flux folks. We're constantly um, doing demos in that space as well. So all the things you see, all the config you see today can happily be put into your GitOps workflow for applying mappings, rate limitings, or all that good stuff. Critically, seamless integration with Linkerd for North, South, East, West traffic management. We'll dive into the topic of North, South and East, West in just a moment. So don't worry if that's a new kind of term, a new phrase for you. Um, but we do, yeah, as Jason said, spoiler alert, the integration is super easy between Emissary Ingress and Linkerd, which is what we like as the NCF projects, right? And, you know, this kind of dovetails with the final point here. We have a big focus, as I know the Buoyant folks do, I know the Linkerd community, a big focus on operational simplicity. Like Kubernetes, I love it, of course, but it's hard enough, right? It's quite a um, challenging framework. It's nice to get your head around when you're new to it. Uh, it all makes sense, I think, once you push through. But we focus, just as you know, Linkerd does, on making your life as a developer easier. We want to get you up and running in a safe, secure manner as fast as possible. That is the goal here. And next slide, Jason, please. Yeah. Emissary is built on Envoy Proxy, so general purpose proxy that comes with strengths and weaknesses, right? Do a lot of things, but also, you know, a bit more resource intensive than, say, the Linkerd proxy, for example, and other proxies. Um, we love Envoy, we love the community, though, another you know, fellow CNCF project. Great support for all the things you want, right? TCP, WebSockets, gRPC, HTTP 1, 2, 3 is coming soon as well, which is uh, super exciting. Um, so loving, the, loving our um, fellow CNCF technology there. I can't mention some of the names of customers, but Emissary Ingress Ambassador Edge Stack runs at super high scale all over the world. Um, and there is some amazing use cases, which I'd love to talk about, but I've got to be a bit careful. And um, scaling from like zero to crazy amounts of requests per second based on, you know, TV shows starting, people logging in, that kind of stuff. Um, some amazing gaming companies we work with, financial companies. Um, and we have worked really hard to make the performance and security top, top notch, right? As you saw on the previous slide, we've been around since 2014, uh, you know, uh, Ambassador Edge Stack to MSRE. And thanks to the community, folks like yourself, 
constantly raising issues, contributing uh, pull request code. It has really got rock solid over the years to handle all the common use cases at scale and, and with the security you need. Uh, observability, all the stuff you know and love, right? Supporting for distributed tracing, hotel headers, all that good stuff. Um, L7 traffic metrics, uh, looking at, I'm sure, like things like red metrics, uh, rates, errors, and duration, things like that. Uh, and lots of logging if you do want to dive into the Envoy logs and see exactly what's going on. That, I think, Jason, if we go to the next slide, that's a nice summary. This one, I'll just put there for more for yourself like, uh, later on, folks. You can grab the slides and have a look. Um, I want to be super clear, like there is a pure open source MSRE ingress, and then there's the edge stack on, on top. You can then download both for free. Uh, and again, you can do all the things we're going to show today in both flavors of, of the API gateway. It's just that out of the box, edge stack gives you more things, and there is a commercial path for you know um, support and SLAs, for example, if you want it as well. So um, we've got an open source Slack, in addition to the Linkedin uh, point Slack, you can always jump on there and ask me some questions if you do want to know more about the differences between the, the two versions. And next slide, please, Jason. I think final one for me, um, did want to introduce this notion of north, south, and east-west traffic. And it's a bit of an old phrase, but it was when we used to draw data center diagrams back in the day, we used to draw them top to bottom like you see here. And traffic flowing from external parties, users, other external parties, into the system was north to south. So that's our ingress, typically the egress to external services as well. That's your north to south. That's where, that's your front door, right? That's where the users are, you know, they're knocking on that front door first. It's where you do see things like DDoS attacks, external DDoS attacks, where the attackers are often coming in, right? Um, but it's where all the good folks using your apps are logging in and doing things as well. So north, south, um, you're not in control of the client. North, south, typically can be a user, good actor, bad actor, who knows? Once you get within your network, you may be doing things like zero trust and, and, you know, more now, but old school networks, when I was kind of racking and stacking, whenever you were addressing another service in that network, calling out to a database, going down another tier, or if you've got a zonal architecture going across zones, a lot of that is east-west because it's flowing from left to right, right to left in the diagrams, right? So east-west these days has got a little more complicated, particularly when you cross clusters, right? So if you're going east to west from a two clusters, is there a north-south component also in there? Because you're going like from one cluster to another. Um, happy to chat more about that some other time. Myself and Thomas Rampelberg did a talk at KubeCon well, a couple of years ago where we actually used um, Emissary Ingress and Linkerd to do multi-cluster. So there's stuff out there you can check out. Check out. Um, we can, you know, on the Slack jump in, we can answer a bunch of questions on that. We're not going to dive into this a lot today, but just remember north, south is users coming into your apps and east, west is predominantly going to be service to service comms in a microservice architecture or service to data store, that kind of stuff. I think that's yeah. me, Jason. Awesome. Yeah, that was, uh, that was really helpful. Thank you. Um, so let me tell you about Linkerd. Uh, I assume most of y'all know, but we're going to cover it anyway. We are a lightweight, fast, and security-focused service mesh for Kubernetes. We're a CNCF project. We hit graduated status last year, which was exciting. Uh, we've got lots of folks that have added themselves to the list of Linkerd adopters. You can see you can see some of them here and more if you just go over to the Linkerd repo and check out check out who is running it, or of course ask on Slack, where hopefully most of you are at this point. I've uh, been in production a long time. You can always see what's latest and greatest over on the edge, although running on the edge, you got to uh, exercise a little bit of caution. Uh, in general, folks, uh, it would be amazing if you could ask questions uh, in either the Slack chat or the Zoom chat. We'd love to talk to you. Uh, the, the Slack chat's a little bit more full featured and you can get some threads, but, um, but yeah, I'd love to hear from you no matter where. So Karen, I believe, Karan, uh, asks that if you have an API gateway, do you need an ingress controller and vice versa? That is an awesome question. So it, I'll, I'll, I'll let Daniel do, it, do a full answer, but my, my quick take on it is it really depends on that API gateway. Daniel? Perfectly said, Jason. I say the ingress controller is often like core functionality, getting that traffic from like users into your systems. Uh, API gateway is a massively overloaded term, I think. It can mean everything from, you know, simple API exposure to full APIM, API management systems, like Apogee and 3Scale, all that kind of stuff, right? And Jason said it perfectly, have a look at your needs. You're always going to need to get traffic in from the user to the back end. Everyone needs that. 
but um, you may or may not need the additional functionality of a full API management system. And as with many things like my days as, as a software architect, it's all about trade-offs, right? You know, the more things, more functionality you bring in, the more cost there is in terms of management, maintenance, all these good things. So assess your needs and plan accordingly is my advice. Awesome. And we have a follow-up from Ashish. Thank you, Ashish. Uh, how does the emissary ingress differ from, say, Nginx ingress? And are there any advantages of one versus the other? Oh, that's a great question. And again, you know, I always like to be fair to competitors, right? We do have strengths and weaknesses, um, uh, all, all of us. Uh, and there's various documents around the, the Learn Kate's um, website is very good. Uh, definitely check out getambassador.io as well, right? Um, there's a bunch of things we're all good at and a few things perhaps, you know, um, there's a, some slight differences. For example, emissary ingress is very good for decentralized workflows. Everyone can write their individual mappings. So if you're working on a big dev team, I can write a mapping, Jason can write a mapping, you can write a mapping, and we're not sort of colliding, writing on the, on the same mappings or the same routing. So love decentralized um, workflow. Um, we've also got some really interesting stats. I know that won't folks look at these things as, as well. We've got some very interesting stats on performance. Now, most gateways are happy sort of in terms of performance of dealing with requests, but something to watch for and where we've really optimized an emissary ingress based on community feedback is performance of updating. Because you imagine in a microservice environment, you're constantly rolling out new mappings, upgrading mappings, changing rate limits. You, you can very easily thrash against sort of the API in terms of changing configurations. And you're constantly having to reload the data plane, the proxy part of the gateway. So we have worked really hard with a number of awesome companies, awesome community folks to make that performance really good. I know, I'm not gonna name names, but I know a few of our competitors do not focus so much on that. But I'm sure they'd say different things about us as well, right? So I, my advice always is know your requirements, go and do some research. You can jump on our Slack, ask us questions uh, and find that sweet spot for you. Yeah, great, great, uh, great answer. You know, for me, I look at it like, what am I trying to accomplish, right? And, you know, when I think of emissary or ambassador edge stack, like if I want something that's that's easy and has like some API gateway features, like that's, that's an absolutely wonderful tool to get that done. Um, we have another one from, do we, do you mind if I, if I keep hammering, hammering you with questions, Daniel? No, I'm good. No, bring them on. If you're happy, Jason. Yeah. <laughs> I love the questions. All right. So Dweed's asking about, and I, sorry if I mispronounce your name. Um, how is distributed tracing realized? Do you add some headers? If so, do you mind talking about it? Uh, so just a quick, quick overview of uh, emissary or ambassador ed stack and, um, and tracing? Yeah, that, thanks, Jason. That's a great question, Dwight. Yeah, really good. Um, so we totally support uh, all the headers, like B3, very popular from the Zipkin days, right? Uh, open, open telemetry, OTEL now. Um, we definitely support that. You can either pass in headers, uh, you can configure MSR Ingress to respect that. So you may, at the very edge of your system, inject a correlation ID, a header, and you can totally propagate that through um, down into MSR and onto Linkerd as well. No problem at all there. You can also tell the gateway to create the ID, uh, the MSR Ingress to say, spin up a new correlation ID that you then pass down the stack. And everything at the edge, everything that Envoy supports, MSR Ingress supports, because um, fundamentally, Emissary Ingress is a control plane over the data plane of Envoy. And Envoy's made really good investment over observability tooling like OpenTelemetry, like Zipkin. Um, so it's totally up to you. Check out our docs if you want to know more. The docs um, should go into all the detail you need. If they don't, hit me up on um, uh, Twitter or hit me up on the Slack because um, the configuration options are quite flexible as to when you inject that correlation ID, that header. And it's on you to make sure you propagate it down through the stack and LinkerD and other service meshes can totally help you do that as well. Yeah, absolutely. Great, great answer. All right. Thanks, folks. Uh, yeah, I won't, I won't talk a ton more here, but, you know, lots of folks are using LinkerD. If you're not using it today, you know, feel free to reach out to me. I'd love to help you get to a place where you're comfortable running it in your production environment or you know, whenever you're comfortable. Quick heads up on how this works. Uh, you, have, you have an ingress in this case, you know, we're gonna show you ambassador edge stack and that, like that ingress takes north south traffic and then we, we add it to the mesh by inserting a bunch of proxies between the applications in your cluster. And those proxies are gonna do stuff that's helpful, right? And they're doing stuff to kind of make up for, you know, what isn't there in Kubernetes natively, right? So at the end of the day, 
in Kubernetes, you run applications, it becomes actually pretty important to understand for every application, what are some common metrics? What are the success rates? What's the latency? How saturated is any given request? Also, who's talking to whom, right? And being able to being able to visualize that is like pretty darn important. Uh, you also need like if you're doing gRPC or if you're doing if you're doing any sort of you know if you're doing a lot of a lot of requests through your environment, how are you going to handle failures? How are you going to select the right endpoint that's not just you know what's next on a round robin list? And then beyond that. Right, like everyone, you know, when you look at Kubernetes, the, the cluster is your security boundary. And if I'm inside the cluster, everything's trusted, everything's plain text, right? And do you, do you really want to allow that? Right, so for Linkerd, our answer is give you common observability for every single application. Dive into those gRPC or HTTP methods so you can see what's going on there. Give you service topologies that make it easy to see, you know, what's talking to what. You'll see some of this in the demo. Also give you the ability to do retries, timeouts, uh, or enhanced load balancing with what we call EWMA, which is a longer topic that I won't bore you with right now. And then security, transparent MTLS, right? So you turn it on, you add your app to Linkerd, and suddenly you have MTLS everywhere, right? So there's no more plain text traffic between your apps. Also allow you to do policy, so you can say on any given service, who should be allowed to talk to that service, right? or um, that deployment or that, you know, stateful set or whatever it may be. We do it in a way like where the goal is to be really easy to run. Like you heard Daniel talk at the beginning, right? Like ambassador and emissary, they try and make it really easy to do this stuff and really performant. And that's exactly the approach Linkerd takes. And it's one of the reasons why that the integration is so easy between the two systems. So with that, oh, we've got a fantastic question. Uh, with that, we're going to go to a demo. But first I want to answer Karan's question. Uh, Linkerd doesn't use Envoy, which is correct. If Ambassador relies on Envoy and we're running Linkerd as well, do we end up with two data plane technologies? Yeah, so I used to say, what was I saying? Like get the, boast out of, get the best out of Envoy and Linkerd, right? Or, you know, in general, like it's, it's a better together story from, from my side. Um, but you do, you do end up with two, two different proxies in your environment. Right, but that, you know, so Linkerd doesn't ship with an ingress, right? Like Linkerd, again, going back to that, we try and stay operationally simple, right? We give you the tooling that you need for that in-cluster story. And then we don't come, we don't come with an opinion about, uh, about the, the ingress, right? We're like, whatever you wanna use, like we'll respect your, your choices and work with that. Provided that that ingress behaves in a way that is, um, Pretty, pretty Kubernetes native. Um, you know, so Envoy is a really powerful tool and running the instances as your ingress, like you, there's a resource cost to running Envoy, but I think it's justified by, by some of the features, right? Especially, especially when, you're, when you're limiting it in, it in its scope, right? And so when you're using the two together, uh, when you're using the two together, you're getting both. Danny, you have anything to add there? Yeah, perfectly said, Jason, I'd say, there's many ways to look at this, but I'm a big fan of the Unix philosophy. Do one thing and do it well, right? And we, the MSO Ingress community, we really focus on on the Ingress, and we've you know we've chosen Envoy proxy as a general purpose proxy to really leverage that. But then the boundaries, the abstractions, the APIs are super clear. That's what we do. Much as Linkerd, what you know, does one job really well: service mesh, service service comms, and the boundaries, the APIs are super clear there too. So the fact they're kind of different engines under the hood, in my mind, they're two sports cars, right? You know, different engines, right? But still get you there in in record time. And like depending on you know maybe a dirt car versus like a Formula One car, right? It's different kind of surfaces they're working on. And, and we like target the ingress, Linkerd. Uh, service mesh. So yes, you are running two data planes, but it's, you can argue the same, like I'm sure many of you watching are polyglot developers, right? You might be got a bit of node in your stack. You got a bit of Java in your stack, some go over there, the right tool for the job, right? Yeah, super well said, thanks. Uh, we have two more questions. I think uh, I think Matei may have answered, um, I think Matei may have answered Moose's question already, but uh, does Linkerd run its own uh, CA? Well, it, it holds a CA internally, and there's a lot about the certificate architecture we can talk about. And ask Matei for more details there in the workshop Slack. Uh, 
Dawid is asking about uh, performance or benefits uh, versus Istio. So I can I can put some stuff out and oh yeah, and I think Charles just answered you in the Slack. We've done some performance benchmarking recently. Now it's done by the folks over at Buoyant who have an opinion right about about the way this works. But um, we certainly found that Linkerd outperforms it in our experience in our experiments, and our customers tend to find that the latency and CPU footprint of Linkerd is really really small. Um, so yeah, let's do a quick demo if that sounds all right. Uh, so I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you, um, and I'm going to ask Daniel a little bit as we go through this, I'm going to show you a install of the emissary or sorry, the ambassador edge stack, right? Which is just the emissary ingress, right? But with their, their additions added on, um, and uh, and we're going to go through and do it. And there's also a live environment that you can look at. So let me just break out of this real quick. Uh, if anyone gets the chance, head on over because we've got we've got two. I'm going to do that. Do it a bit Martha Stewart style, right? So we're going to have one that I'm doing locally and one that's already ready to go. Uh, so if you get a chance, go check out uh, that link. It's dashboard.cvo.59s.io. You'll see an ambassador instance. And you'll see it routing traffic to all these things, including the dashboard that you're looking at right now. This is routing through uh, Ambassador Edge Stack at the moment. So go on, check it out, and feel free to, to spoil spoil the the demo reveals uh, with that. The best part is still is still yet to come. Um, one more, Ashish asked about with Liquidity providing MTLS, would you recommend terminating TLS at the ingress or terminate at the pod level? I would recommend both. Yeah, definitely have your ingress terminate TLS so you can get those those happy little uh, security locks, right? It says valid, verified by Lex Encrypt and all that. But you still have, you know, because you have the the uh, ambassador instance in the in the mesh, you can see it sending fully encrypted traffic to every every service it's talking to, right? So, so you know, por que no los dos, I guess. Um, or why so not? just flagging there, Jason. So like, I know some use cases I've worked in the past when I was consulting is we did actually have the ingress proxy as a pure pass-through for the various financial reasons, like or sorry, it's financial uh, institution, and therefore the client uh, external service had a certificate that was verified deep in the stack of the um, of our actual application. So we do support that in, in MSRE, like passing it all the way through. But the most common deployment I see is what you mentioned, terminate TLS at the ingress and reinitialize it straight away and pass it on down through into the service mesh. So that there is kind of both use cases there. And I'm pretty sure we support both, um, but it's a good question to ask. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Uh, so what I've done here is I'm adding the data wire repo Right, then we're gonna then we're gonna go ahead and and use it. Right before we do the install, so this is from the ambassador's uh, instructions. We're gonna go ahead and apply their their CRDs. You see on the right hand side, by the way, this is everything in the cluster, right? Sorted by sorted by namespace. So you'll see what gets created as we go through it. So a bunch of stuff is gonna pop up: custom resource definitions and some new pods or new deployment. We're going to wait on, on that new deployment, the Emissary API extension, and let that go. Great time for questions. There's going to be a couple quick pauses in here. So if anyone has anything, oh, thank you, Karan. Um, does installing a Bester Edge Stack also install Emissary Ingress? Can Edge Stack be used with other Ingress controllers? Um, I don't Shall know. I take that one? Yeah, please. Yeah. Um, great question, Karan. Uh, so, um, if you're familiar with open core, that's fundamentally what um, Ambassador Edge Stack is. So it's a wrapper, if you like, around emissary ingress, but it's a very tight wrapper. And that's because we get, you know, maximum benefit from all the engine, the open core, if you like, of emissary ingress. And Ambassador Edge Stack adds on a bunch of nice to haves, well, essentials to have, things like auth support, rate limiting, out of the box. Because it's super tight integration, no, you can't use the Edge Stack with another um, proxy, if you like, or another um, uh, ingress. Uh, the um, Think of uh, Edge Stack as a wrapper around emissary ingress. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh all right, so now that we've got the that in, we're going to go ahead and create an ambassador namespace. Uh, and then we're going to install it. 
Uh, so I'm installing uh, the edge stack or data wire slash edge stack from the, or in the ambassador namespace from their, their repo. And we're calling it edge stack. All right, we have a, a lot of text that just dumped out, told you about your environment and, and what you did. And again, we see now new pods getting created over here. Oops, there we go. We see new pods getting created over here that are actually gonna be, be that ingress. So again, we're just gonna wait, make sure that we're, we're ready. One thing that folks often do ask here, um, Jason, is why are we running three edge stacks? And it's for it's, it's a default um, option. You can totally run as many pods or as few pods as you like. We always recommend at least three just for resilience purposes. And good old Kubernetes under the hood manages that for us, right? We declare three. It will always make sure three pods are running. Nice. Awesome. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. Uh, now that we've got the install done, we have to create our listener. And I'm going to look at the object. And, and Daniel, I'd actually love to hear a little bit about the listener from you. Yeah, and it's a good shout, Jason, because listeners new in uh, MSRE Ingress and Edge Stack 2.0. So we just released that pre-Christmas, I think it was, December time. Uh, and now we've got 2.2 out, I think, last week. And we changed up based on community feedback, listening to a community, listening to customers. We changed up the way we expose uh, MSRE Ingress uh, externally. So now the listeners define the ports that are going to be <clears throat> listening for external um, communication. And we'll look at hosts in just a moment. Hosts define how visible uh, MSRE Ingress is in terms of domain names and TLS certificates and so forth. But listeners, yeah, if anyone's familiar with sort of previous proxy configurations, it's quite a common um, approach. We are saying listen on these ports for communications, typically one for plain uh, unencrypted traffic, HTTP, ADAD in this case, and also for encrypted traffic, typically on port 443 or 8443. That's where we're going to terminate TLS. Nice. And Prantic has a question, which is not stupid or foolish, but what is the relationship between ambassador and emissary? It's a great question, <laughs> Prantic. And uh, until the eyes are spotted when Jason was loading up, we've got data wire in the mix as well, right? So it's, it's a naming challenge. We've, uh, as a business, we've been around for um, six, seven years now. Ambassador Labs is, is the company I work for now. Previously, we were called DataWire. Um, so you often see DataWire in our um, repo names. So don't be surprised by that. That was our old old name, so to speak. Um, we created a gateway uh, and donated it to the CNCF, which was Ambassador API Gateway. But we wanted to keep the Ambassador name for our company. So we had to change the name to emissary ingress. So apologies for the confusion. I really need to write a blog post about this <laughs> sometime. But um, Ambassador Labs is the name of the company now. And the gateway we created, Ambassador, La uh, Ambassador API Gateway, we've now donated to the CNCF as an open source project, is called emissary ingress. So slightly strange naming collisions there, but that's fundamentally it. Awesome. Jordan asked a great question. Jordan, if you don't mind, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause you uh, till we're a little further along, and we'll we'll come back to that. Um, but let me know if that's okay, and uh, and remind me later. And I I promise not to forget. Uh, so now that we've got our listeners created, thank you, Jordan. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and apply the listeners just to get them created. So we have our our two new listeners. Uh, you're not actually gonna see any hosts on this cluster, but I'll hop on to another cluster after this after this, which does have actual hosts. Uh, and now I'm gonna install Linkerd. So in all, in all our work here, all we've done is install Ambassador and get ready to start taking some requests. And now we're gonna, we're gonna install Linkerd and then we're going to uh, add it to our cluster and connect the two together. So this standard Linkerd install, you know, we curl the bash, we export our path, and then we check our version. So I'm on stable 2.11.1, it's great. Uh, there's no server-side version, obviously, because it's not installed in the cluster. Uh, and we're going to validate. So I'm running a K3S cluster on Docker desktop in WSL in Windows 11 here for y'all. So we've got a nice mix of confusing stuff. So let's just check that I have permissions and haven't forked anything quite yet. Uh, actually, I know. Like in England, is that that's not a bad word, right? Like that's a kind word for messed up. I hope totally fine. Oh, totally okay. fine. there is a few which don't translate well into right. The UK. Yeah, <laughs> I read I read the register too much. I think so. What we did there is we we did our pre check, right? And we got a bunch of green check marks to say, hey, we're ready to go. So 
let's do our Linkerd install. And because I'm lazy, I'm combining a Linkerd install with a Linkerd check. So it's going to do it all in one go. So let's kick that off. If you're not familiar with that, bash syntax like and and means if the first one succeeds, run the second one. So we see Linkerd installing over here on the right. Um, and it's just going to check for that to be ready. I used to do a lot more tap dancing here, but this has gotten to be a pretty quick process. Um, I'm not even sure I have time for my networking joke, but all right, I'm going to give you one. Daniel, uh, I have a I have a UDP joke for you. You might not get it. <laughs> I love that one. <laughs> I probably I've said that a lot of times. It's so. a classic, right? <laughs> yeah, classic. <laughs> classic UDP jokes. All right, so Linkerd is installed and we're and we're going. So let's get uh, let's keep going. So because we want to show you the dashboard and show you some what's going on. You know, we've just installed core Linkerd, but the the UI, if you've ever seen that UI or that you saw the dashboard that I linked in the in the Slack chat or in the um, or in the Zoom chat, uh, that is the Linkerd dashboard. And we call that Linkerd Viz. So let's add that to the cluster. Linkerd Viz install, kubectl apply, and then Linkerd Viz check. So once again, right, a bunch of new pods are going to get created. How do you install? Oh, great. Uh, Jin, Jin Hung, and please let me know if I if I said your name incorrectly, um, asked, how do you install Linkerd easily if you use a private Docker or Helm repo? Yeah, awesome. So it, it's going to depend what your registry is internally, but there's a lot of really good tools, including one from the Bitnami folks that I always forget their name, but there's a there are a lot of good tools that will mirror images and Helm charts from public repositories into yours. And I don't know if you're if you're using an OCI compliant registry uh, like like something like Harbor, which there's a longer story there about OCI compliance. Oh, great! So Artifactory has the ability to mirror remote repositories and bring them in locally in a really fairly straightforward way. Um, so essentially, you just mirror it and then update your values to point at your image paths. There's a lot going on here as Prometheus spins up uh, with the default Linkerd install. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to add in a Prometheus, uh, an in-memory Prometheus and in-memory Grafana as part of the install. Generally, when you're going to production, we ask that you look at using an external Prometheus for this data, right? So that you're not you're not subject to what you know what can be allocated for an in-memory database for Prometheus. So we just had our checks pass for the dashboard, and we're ready to go. Uh, now we want to now we want to integrate. Oh, so I, I forgot the forgot my, my line here. But what we're doing here is I'm going to show you all the steps you need to take to integrate Ambassador or Emissary with Linkerd, right? And so what we're, we're going to do it, uh, we're going to do it manually, but it's really easy to add into your GitOps flow, into your Helm charts. And we've got examples of that that you can see. Uh, and we can dive in if you have questions later. Um, but we're going to take the deployment. We're going to take the YAML for the Ambassador Edge stack. We're going to add an annotation that says Linkerd inject enabled. And then we're going to tell it to ignore inbound traffic on AD and 443 for the Ambassador Edge stack. Because we don't actually, like Linkerd is not going not to care about what's coming into this. They're only going to care about what happens as it goes out from there and into the rest of your environment. And then we're going to hand it right back to kubectl. We get a little warning because it doesn't want you to do it this way, right? Because here we've got one that was installed with Helm, and now we're modifying that Helm chart directly from the CLI. Uh, but that's all that warning means. You can see there's a new Ambassador Edge stack kicking off, right? And so these instances now go from having one pod or one container per pod to two containers per pod. And that second container is now that Linkerd proxy. Uh, Karan asked another great question. Does it only work with Prometheus? Would it work with Datadog? Yes. So Datadog, as an example, has an integration already. But those Linkerd proxies, right? Like every single one of them contains a little endpoint that answers when scraped, uh, scraped by a Prometheus instance, right? So there's a Prometheus scrape config that you can use to get the data from these things. So anything that can do Prometheus scrapes can talk right to the proxies. So if you wrote your own thing, if you're using Datadog, New Relic, any monitoring tool. Like I, I don't know, I don't know all the monitoring tools, but it's pretty, it's a pretty common format uh, for data and it's a pretty common collection mechanism. 
Now, just very quickly chuck in, Jason. We're exactly the same. Emissary Ingress, same same deal. Like endpoint, we do also support the dogs. Is it dogs D or like stats D dogs endpoint? They've they, they have their there is a data log specific endpoint which we support as well. But okay. most tools, as you said, like support like as long as they support scraping uh, Prometheus style, we're good to go. Dog stats ah. D, thank you, Joshua. That's it. I, can, I always mangle that name. Apologies to the data dog folks because I love them. They're awesome. But that's it. Dog stats D, brilliant. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, so we're going to do, so now, uh, now what we've got here is uh, we have Ambassador, we have Linkerd, we have the Linkerd dashboard, and we're going to want to, one, add an application and get some traffic to that application. I'm going to show you, now that we've done the integration, what does a mapping look like? So this is the simplest mapping that I could figure out. So we're going to deploy an app. Uh, spoiler alert, once again, it's going to be called PodInfo. And what we're doing is for any host name at the root, we're going to send you over to that pod info service, right? And that's going to be, that's going to be our, our traffic. Um, so that mapping there is going to be applied when I create the whole pod info. So we're doing kubectl apply dash K, that's customization. We're going to create pod info. And so let's see what that looks like. Creates namespace, config map, a bunch of stuff. Uh, and we see, oh. Way too much action. Hold on. Oops. Oh, darn it. Put it on the wrong side. See, this is why you got to be wary of messing up live demos. So watch k get pods dash n pod info, just so you can see what's going on in the pod info namespace. So we've got our apps coming up, and and we're actually going to connect them. And let's shrink this and stop all the bright colors from distracting me. Uh, okay, let's go back to this. Now we can look at localhost 8443. We get a warning because I don't have a valid certificate. But what I'm doing is, is when I built this little local cluster, I force forwarded 8443 on my localhost directly to a little load balancer that goes directly to the ambassador edge stack. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna take our chances, accept our risk, go on, and we see a hello from Pod Info, right? So we have you know it's it's upset because uh, because I'm not using I'm using a self signed certificate, but we now have end to end traffic encrypted you know from the front door all the way through to uh, to the back end, and I'll show you it in one other way. Gonna pop open a local dashboard. Any second now, perfect. And we can see this is our cluster, right? For those that have used Linkerd, you probably have some sense of it. Uh, but we can see, you know, for our Pod Info app, what does it actually look like? Well, I've got a traffic generator, a front end, and Pod Info. Uh, I didn't route to the front end in our mapping. I read it right to Pod Info. So let's go click on Pod Info, and I can see that it has a couple things talking to it, right? We've got one, the direct calls from Ambassador Edge Stack, which are, are right here. We have from the front end where generator is sending a traffic and then also Prometheus is scraping it because that built-in Prometheus, when you install Linkerd, is going to get data. And now that we've loaded up this page, we're also getting TAP, right? Because TAP is telling us what endpoint is being hit, how often is it being hit, how is it responding, and what's the success rate on that particular path within your API. And this is, this is the heart of that integration. Right, so not bad. We're 45 minutes with a lot of talking. You've got end-to-end -end TLS. Any any questions? Now's a great time. Um, oh, let me answer Jordan, actually. So Jordan asked about talking to an external database. So let's go over to let's go over to our other dashboard, right? Our our slightly bigger one. Right. So this is running in Sivo Cloud, which by the way, if you haven't checked them out, they're a great company actually out of England, right? Or out of the UK. Sorry, the UK. Um, and they do Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes clusters on demand. You can spin them up. They're inexpensive, and I I love them. I use them for for stuff all the time. So check that out if you get the chance. Uh, but I'm not using any off cluster databases here. So when I talk about end to end TLS, and when we talk about end to end, end, -to -end TLS, right for Linkerd, the story is in the Kubernetes cluster. It does not go beyond it today. Now we. You know, our our um, one of our founders, William Morgan, uh, no relation, just for clarity, uh, 
is um, he wrote this blog post about what's next in the service mesh and Linkerd uh, this year. And one of the things that we're working on is how do you take that, that proxy? So the, the MTLS comes because you have two sides of the conversation have the proxy, right? And they are the ones that handle that connection. But when you go off cluster to a database, whatever it is, there's no proxy there because it only runs in, in Kubernetes today. So on, the, on our roadmap for Linkerd 2.13 is what we're calling mesh expansion. That is moving, the, moving that, that proxy or extending the mesh beyond the kube cluster. Right, and you can read more about it here and I'll put it in the Slack chat as well. So check that out. Um, long story short is it's not gonna do a lot for you or it's not gonna do anything for you for your off cluster databases today. You're gonna have to set up TLS on those databases and, and connect to them directly. Um, going forward, right, we're hoping to have, have it so that you can extend the mesh beyond your, your Coop clusters. Oh yeah, great. Um, so Ashish asked, uh, the demo is end-to-end -end encrypted, but did you have to specify any annotations on the ingress uh, so that it knows it's gonna handle HPS or, or gRPC? Um, and yeah, the answer is I didn't hide anything behind the curtain, right? Like you got absolutely all that was required to set it up in the steps, right? So no special, no special configuration, right? Ambassador Edge Stack is going to, so there's, there is some difference and I'll let Daniel dive into it. There is some difference between Emissary Ingress and Ambassador Edge Stack. Like Ambassador Edge Stack is easier to use, but it's their, it's their commercial product. And so I'm sorry, Daniel, why don't you elaborate on that? I always like hearing other folks talk about it as well, Jason. Yeah. It's nice to check, check the marketing materials working well, right? And the docs are good. Yeah. Um, great shout. So um, Ambassador Edge Stack is super easy. Like you get the self-signed certificate, literally out of the box as Jason showed. Um, it's a like one step, you write a host file. I can ping the link in the chat in a minute to um, link up to Let's Encrypt. If you wanna use the Acme protocol with Let's Encrypt, you literally write a host, put your email address in there. As long as you've got a domain name, um, you're good to go. You, you can get like a genuine Let's Encrypt stuff get within seconds. Um, that's Ambassador Edge Stacks. So we've built uh, an Acme um, tool within uh, Ambassador Edge Stack. Uh, you can also use Cert Manager. I'm sure many of you have bumped into um, Jetstack's Cert Manager um, to plug into Emissary Ingress. So the docs, if you go to our Emissary Ingress docs page, you can see how to use Cert Manager. And again, it's a little bit more involved um, to set up Cert Manager, um, but it, I did it within like 20 minutes, half an hour when, when I do demos. Um, so Ambassador um, Edge out of the box, good to go, super easy. Uh, Emissary Ingress, a few more steps to go through to use Cert Manager, but then you can put your own certs in there or you can use Let's Encrypt. You know, Daniel, does the emissary ingress, does it default? So the ambassador edge stack defaults to forcing you to HTTPS, right? When a connection comes in. I wasn't sure if if the emissary ingress did that as well, but it's even if it doesn't, it's a very simple bit of configuration. It's all on the listener, Jason. Yeah, so it depends. So now with, with ambassador edge stack and emissary ingress two, but uh, folks that are migrating from one to two, the behavior is changing. So it's a great question because we do, we're trying to make it as secure as possible. So with two, you have to be a bit more explicit in the listener as to what ports you're opening and what, do, do you want to accept plain text? Do you want to rewrite, uh, sorry, do you want to redirect or do you want to refuse? Because we have like so many use cases, right? Some folks like just refuse, drop the traffic. We don't want to take it. Some folks are, I want to promote HTTP to HTTPS. We cater for all those um, demands. So um, check out the docs. If you're on version 1.14 or so of Emissary Ingress, a bit different than version two, but um, the docs should walk you through. And if it don't, if they don't, reach out to me and I'll make sure we, uh, we update that. Yeah, awesome. Um, but yeah, long story short, there was no special config. You're seeing here, so I switched over in this environment to my you know, pre-made cluster that already has a bunch of stuff going on, including valid DNS, so you can go to any of these sites. So if anyone wants to check it out, well, don't go to the Argo one because there's nothing there. But if you go to Mojivoto or Books app or PodInfo or the dashboard, you're gonna see a valid certificate. You're gonna see a valid certificate that I created by doing nothing more than making a little host entry, right? And, and handing it off to the cluster and the ambassador uh, edge stack CRDs took care of generating the certificate for me. It was crazy. It was like, it was probably about 30 seconds today to, to get those up and running, which is very nice. Um, or I guess that was yesterday. Um, so it's, it's really, it's really pretty straightforward. Uh, any other questions or anything y'all, y'all want to see? This is, this is kind of the core, the core of the demo. Um, 
That's kind of the core of the demo. Uh, Daniel, I think the, for, it, oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, Jason. I say the interesting thing, like um, that we, you and I have done these, you know, these kind of demos and, and we've done workshops before together. It's so simple. It almost, you know, people are like, is that it? And it genuinely is, right? Because yeah. again, we do the ingress really well, the, the MSRA ingress really well. LinkedIn handles the east, um, east west and they just blend together, you know, CNCF projects. They both respect the Kubernetes resource model, strong use of CRDs, clear separation of, of control. Um, it just like, we, when we first put it together, we were like, is this all we need to do to make it work? And it was like, yeah, it is. And yeah. it's that simple, which is good, right? Yeah, I like so I like showing the integration with Argo rollouts or or, um, or Flagger. And one of the things that you see is it's really cool because I can I can have it work at the ingress level if I have ingress features I want, or I can have it work oh, at the service mesh mm -hmm. level if I want it at the SMI. And because because the boundary is like so clearly defined between you, again, all I do add add the Linkerd proxy to my my emissary instance. Right, so add add that, and you know, emissary will make smart choices about where to send stuff depending on how it's been configured. So you just let it do its thing, let Linkerd do its piece, and they they just play really happily together, which I like. Uh, Jin Hong asked another question. Um, uh, yeah, so do we? All right, so they ask. We have a very locked down AKS environment where all traffic between the control plane and worker nodes are going through a firewall, uh, which I hope is network policy, um, which I hope is network policy. And I'm, I'm going to ask Charles. Charles is in the chat. Charles, if you don't mind responding to her directly, because I know we've got a document that covers exactly what ports you need to open when you're looking at network policy. But uh, she asked, do we have a document that covers what type of traffic needs to be allowed uh, in order to use Linkerd? Uh, so, Yes, we do, and Charles will get that to you because I, I, I don't want to go scanning through the docs right now because I won't find it and it'll be embarrassing. Um, I think Ashish is getting ready to ask a question. I don't know if there's anything anything else I want to point out. Um, Just to, um, like, I, I like what you mentioned about Argo, Jason, for folks that are perhaps sort of looking around this, um, Canary releasing is what we were talking about there. Really powerful because um, with cloud native apps, we generally separate deploy and release. So you can deploy multiple versions of your app, right? But you release them as a business decision. Do you know what I mean? I want 5% of traffic to go to this version of the app. Maybe I want to test like SLAs, right? Does my new version of the service like have good latency? Maybe I want to test business stuff. Is a new version of the service converting users more effectively? Um, so you want to do things like blue green rollouts, canaries, all this good stuff. And two CNCF projects, both awesome. Argo CD and Flux um, support Canary rollouts. And um, as Jason alluded to, Emissary Ingress supports them at the Ingress level. So you can do kind of quite coarse grained uh, AB Canary releasing at the Ingress, but then you can also use SMI to do exactly the same further down your stack. So you can say Canary release or Canary test a um, an arbitrary service at any depth. So it might be the case of Ingress, you know, request comes into the Ingress, goes through a bunch of services, and then you're um, releasing a new version of like some other service there and you want to check it works well. So Canary releasing, I have shameless plug, I did a workshop um, a few weeks ago uh, and you can find it online, if, I don't know, ping me if you want to know, about using Argo CD. Um, it, was, it was primarily an Argo CD and Argo rollouts workshop and I think I did use, um, I only used uh, edge stack on that one. I didn't actually give a link D demo, but we totally could in the future if you're interested. But um, things like canary releasing, super powerful. And again, both tools support it really well. Yeah, awesome. Um, so we got a, another question from Ashish, but I'm going to give it a second. I want to make sure we get through these last slides before we, we go to it. Uh, next up on the Service Mesh Academy is a deep dive into certificate management with Linkerd. It should be exciting or as exciting as certificates get. It'll at least be really informative. And I hope I hope you join. I'll be watching. Uh, and let's talk about Ambassador Cloud because I think you've got some some big news for us, Daniel. Is that is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, well, even bigger news next week. So stay tuned, folks. We're launching a new version. Uh, we're constantly launching new versions of Ambassador Cloud. But next week will be even more exciting stuff. So follow me on Twitter. Follow Ambassador Labs on Twitter if you want to know more. And what we're talking about today, EdgeStack and Emissary Ingress, is one part of our code ship run platform. And um, there's a bunch of functionality there. If you do want to um, play around with telepresence, you're looking for fast feedback loops, telepresence connects your local dev environment to a remote cluster seamlessly. So we can uh, curl 
namespace specific services in a remote cluster. We can reroute or intercept traffic going into remote cluster down to our local machines, debug using that traffic, send it back into the cluster, call services from the cluster. Love telepresence is one of the reasons I joined the company like four plus years ago now. Uh, it made my life as a Java developer so much easier. So code super fast with telepresence. We've got integrations with Argo for shipping using Canary releases, exactly what Jason and I just talked about. We help you uh, avoid the need to write lots of YAML. So we love Argo, but you do have to write a lot of YAML to configure it. We've made it super easy to automatically generate pull requests uh, to your um, GitOps workflow. Uh, so if you're using GitHub, you can do a pull request enter a few um, details in Ambassador Cloud's UI, it will generate all the Argo CD rollouts for you. Uh, no, you know, again, you can um, reuse that uh, rollout. It's not a custom uh, CRD other than the actual CRD from Argo itself. We just help you uh, write the YAML if you like. And the same with, uh, with EdgeStack as well. A lot of cool functionality. Uh, you can sort of get the high level overview, service catalog, all with Ambassador Cloud as well. So love, you know, love folks to check it out. There's a free, free account, free tier there. Pop along to the um, link down the bottom, uh, dive in, have a play around, join our Slack, give us feedback. That would be awesome. Yeah, I've been, I've been poking at it and I, I really enjoy it. Uh, only an extra thing I'd say, all right, sorry, my computer had took, took a moment. It, it wanted me to remember to pause. Uh, so uh, the only other thing I'd say is telepresence like the Ambassador Edge stack, you're going to be shocked to hear the integration just works, right? So if you're using it with Linkerd, just add to the mesh and everything, everything works fine, which is really nice. And then you can also use it with policy if you're using Linkerd 2.11 to do some cool stuff. Um, one more. Oh, no, I think that's it. Yeah. So sorry, let me go back. There we go. Uh, so we had a question from Ashish, uh, which was, um, our deployment is on premise and not connected to the outside world. Would it be beneficial for us to use Ambassador Edge Stack or just the emissary ingress? And what's, what's the advantage of using one uh, over the other? Uh, so uh, Investor Edge Stack totally can be deployed on, on premise if you're running your own Kubernetes clusters, weekly friendly to the clouds as well. Um, uh, Edge Stack comes with more features out of the box. So authentication, plug it into uh, Keycloak, into All Zero, Otka, your favorite IDP. We've got rate limiting out of the box, which is super useful, I think, in the enterprise context. Um, so Edge Stack um, provides a richer set of functionality. Um, check out the link there actually, get ambassador.io uh, slash additions. It will show you the differences between the pure open source, emissary ingress and edge stack. But um, all of the tech we've talked about here today, as long as you've got Kubernetes, you are good to go. Doesn't matter if it runs on um, you know, internal Kubernetes, bare metal, or if you're running in the cloud or some other virtualization technology, and providing you've got Kubernetes, you are good to go. And I just put that link in both the chats so you all have oh, to check yes, yes. it out yourself. Uh, so one more, just because I want to do a plug too. Uh, I hate being left out. Point Cloud. <laughs> it is the best way to run Linkerd in mission critical environments. So you have some tooling to make your life easier. You know, we want you to use Linkerd. We want you to be successful with Linkerd. Let us know how's it, how's it, how it's going. Oof, that was a tongue twister. Let us know how it's going. We have the Linkerd channel in the Linkerd Slack. We have a Point Cloud channel in the Linkerd Slack, and it's just fantastic to hear from you. If you have questions, feel free to hit us up, and you can request a private demo for yourself or your friends over at buoyant.io slash demo. You'll get to hear more from this guy. Um, and thank you. This was wonderful. I'm so grateful for the questions. I'm so grateful for your time, folks. And Daniel, really super grateful that you, you took your time out to be our very first ever Service Mesh Academy guest. It's been fun. You know, I always enjoy hanging out with the the boy and Linkerd community, right? Like we're, we're kind of brothers from another mother, right? The, yeah, the, the community, right? It's just a bunch of like awesome like family folks. They're more than happy to uh, be uh, be part of this. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I'm gonna stop the recording and then I'll I'll hang out to answer any additional questions folks have.